There's gotta be a way to rotate these things. Maybe there's a control panel nearby.
been listening to America Overnight, celebrating 29 years of the shadows. Thank you for staying with us. Here's our first call. What am I about to tell you? If they found out, I don't know what would happen. If you found out, brother? The men in the suits. They told me it was an industrial accident. But this is something else. Something nobody talks about. Ordinary. This certainly doesn't sound very ordinary, Colin. No, not ordinary. Ordinary. It's a town. And it's very industrial accident. I mean, that's what we That's easy. Oh, please watch the language, Colin. Maybe it's too many. We're still a funny show. I, I'm sorry. It's just my brother was there. They said the town was destroyed, but... But the, the people are gone, but the town's there. It's still there. So the population of an entire town disappears, yet the town remains. Tell me, was the phrase, there is no salvation written anywhere? I'm... I'm not sure. The same thing happened in Brazil in 23, a village called Fort Verde. More than 600 people just up and left. The government said they were fleeing guerrilla forces. But we know the truth. A mass abduction. As predicted by my regular guest, Dr. Quincy Noble. Abduction? You mean aliens? That's bullshit! I know they're lying! Oh, I warned you about the language caller. I'm afraid we're gonna have to cut you off. And good timing, too. It's time for a short break. Hang in there. America Overnight will be right back. intruding upon our world in the form of altered world events. These forces gravitate toward archetypal objects, a gun, a, a television, a supposedly haunted house. So clearly humanity affects this process. Our collective unconscious is a, a map of sorts. We hold the key, but we don't know how to use it. We create these archetypes through everyday life, popular culture, urban legends, observing and influencing a complicated system in action. We can change the likelihood of something being a receptacle for these forces just by thinking about it. But we haven't found a method to control the outcome. And yet, there's something unique in us, in our dreams, in the conceptual reality with power, with our minds. What's the cause and what's the effect? Are we the starting point or just a Necessary evil in this, a byproduct, a reflection, a projection. We'll struggle to find the answers to these hard questions, or die trying. my fault. I couldn't control it yet, but I can now. I learned. Will you tell him? In a single word, describe the world around you. A prison. A cold, empty prison. Not even a poster on the wall. Mm -hmm. 
What is the next number in the sequence 3, 6, 9, 12, 15? 18. What day is it today? How the hell would I know? It's not like you give me a calendar. You find a rabbit in the woods. It is breathing, but not moving. You cannot see any blood. What do you do? Leave it. Expand on that. It doesn't matter. The rabbit's not real. None of it's real. What day is it today? Do you enjoy asking people questions that can't be answered? Is, is this what gets you up in the morning? What you dreamed of doing as a scared, stupid little girl? Can you describe a dog to me? In Ordinary, we had a friend. Nosebleed Neil. And when it all went crazy, you know what I mean. Nosebleed Neil turned into a dog. Or something like a dog. What day is it tomorrow? Fuck off! I don't know! There is no calendar! How can I fucking know? Dylan, calm down. Fuck you! Fuck you and fuck Casper! Hey, hey! hey uh, are you watching this, you old fuck? Did you send your bitch because you're too scared of me? Where is Casper? Security, get a team in here. I need... a poem last time we talked. By Thomas Zane? Yes. Beyond the shadow you settle for, there's a miracle illuminated. Hmm. I looked the poem up. Only I couldn't find any poet by that name. I did find a European filmmaker who moved here in the 60s, named Thomas Zane. What? I don't... No matter. It suits you very well. The poem? 
How you see things? Maybe you wrote it yourself? I didn't. No matter. We've said a few times that you feel like there's a piece of you missing. Can we talk about that? Okay. Yeah, um, it's this. I feel an emptiness, a yearning for something that I think I lost. It's natural for you to feel that way. Your brother and your parents are dead. No, no, Dulin's not dead. And that's not even it. You were referring to the imaginary friend from your childhood? Polaris, she's come back. After a long time, she's calling me. In a dream I saw, she, she showed me things. Jesse, it felt more real than anything. As real as what happened in Ordinary. The industrial accident in your hometown that you believe Polaris caused. No, it wasn't an accident. There was no industrial accident and Polaris didn't cause it. She saved me and Dylan. Jesse. No. It was a cover-up. The government knows about it. There were agents there. Agents from... I don't know exactly, but they took Dylan. They... I'll find them. I won't stop looking. Polaris wants me to go to New York. There's a building there. I have to leave soon. I have to be there at a very specific time. Something... Something hugely important is going to happen. Jesse, you know we can't let you go until you're well. And that begins by understanding what's real and what's imagined. here in the middle of New York, and nobody saw a thing. Pretty unbelievable.
We should check that lab. I'm setting up a new department, dimensional research in the research sector. Uh, transferring the slide projector there, that's where my focus will be now. The ordinary site remains as is. We'll be back to... I, I don't know when. Darling took the projector to the research sector. He dedicated a whole area to it, so he knew it was important. Dimensional research. That's where we go next. <laughs> 